Go ahead, Dad. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another question and answer. Um, we think that things are improving a little bit, so we're happy about that. But uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to do some comments, answering some comments and questions here. And also, um, if I'm going to be showing um, a tutorial today on how to make a mask uh, with some upholstery uh, materials. So in an upholstery shop, I think we, I found that I was very challenged with my remnants because, um, well, I'll explain a little bit more but when we go over there, but one of the biggest problems I found was finding, trying to find a fabric that wasn't scotch guarded um, or even Teflon coated. Um, I, I find that most of my fabrics are, but I did find a couple of fabrics that I could use for the mask. And I also found a very uh, useful material, and it's the Celestra that we use on the bottom of furniture that for a filter. I think that it's really good. I happen to have some white Celestra, so. Uh, and I can see that that is very breathable, but non-porous. And I know that because it doesn't leak dust. So that is a good material, along with the cottons that I have found. So we'll, we'll show you the, uh, how at least I do it. And, so anyhow, before we do that, and then also if I have time, I want to show you a, another a measuring up a wing chair. And I, I'll talk a little bit about this chair. It's got some interesting history, uh, personal history for me. So um, let's get going on some questions um, or comments. I have a comment, a nice comment on how to apply leather to a drop-in seat. And it was from Robert. And uh, Robert said that, and, and I don't think I mentioned this in the video. This is him saying this, but I think it's a great tip for you guys. He said he practices on the back corners, and then hopefully uh, the fronts are spot on. Thanks, he says, thanks to me. Uh, but that's his idea, and I think it's a good one. Yeah, if you're going to be doing a slip seat, which is going to only be visible from the front, or anything for that matter, it's good to practice on those backs that aren't seen, sure. A great tip right there, you guys. Um, Robert also says... Um, uh, waterfall skirt tips. I, I, I did a, a tutorial not long ago. That was just recently posted, right? Pat? It came up yesterday, or two days ago. Just two days ago. And we don't do a lot of these waterfall skirts. Um, I used to do a lot in the 90s when the designers were really, really doing that, almost everything they did. And uh, it's a little unusual. It's kind of like a half tailored skirt, half slip cover, if that makes sense. But uh, he commented on, he says, the first time ever seeing um, that process, and he says it has possibilities. Um, yeah, they, it, it's kind of a unique look, so you guys might want to check that out on the YouTube channel. And then we come to uh, Miss, M-I-S-S, -S, um, she's funny, um, I, I was doing an upholstery, a sofa part one, it was a, one of the only, uh, what did we have, like nine pots on that patch that we posted, it's a sofa. Yeah. And she, she's funny, she said, you must be a fellow Bostonian. It's, <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, that's to miss. Um, and then we have um, fixing a torn cushion seam cheaply. That was a tutorial that we did a little bit longer ago, I think, Patrick. Um, this is from Daring to Be Myself. I like that name. And, and by the way, you guys can ask questions if, if you've got some pent up questions that you want to ask from last week or the week before, or follow up Look, questions. Pamela's tuned in, Lauren's tuned in, Claire tuned in. Hi, guys. And we're going to get to Pam's posted last minute. She posted some pictures that we're going to get to, too, uh, on, the, on the upholstery forum. And have we been okaying people on that forum, Patrick? We, I think we got... Yeah, I've been up on top of it. Yeah, we got a couple of new requests. How many people do we have on that forum? Do you know offhand? Um, almost, I think over 30 at this point. Wow, that's, check, but I know it was getting that's, that's really there. good. That's really good. Yeah, we're going to get all our subscribers on there. So we, should have, we still mentioned that, too, that we just got 8,000 subscribers. Oh, we did. Yes. We just turned 8,000 subscribers. That's great, Patrick. Yeah, well, we're supposed to do a 7,000 subscriber video, but I guess now we're doing 8,000 subscribers. Yeah, we missed the seven month. <laughs> that means we're getting them faster than we ever have, right? Yeah. So, Daring uh, to be myself gave me a great compliment. I appreciate it. He said, you, sir, have talent, and you did a fantastic job. That pillow looks brand new. So we just, uh, I think that was one of the tips, because we know there's a lot of people at home um, who, who maybe have some time and maybe they could fix up just little things they could do to spruce up their furniture. And I think I, I did want to answer, um, I think I was showing people how to fix cat damage, I think last week, and I was using Elmer's glue, and somebody said, why not a hot glue gun? Well, if you have a hot glue gun, that's fine, but I find that most people don't have a hot glue gun. So the Elmer's glue is a good replacement. By the way, that's all we ever used to use in the old days. We didn't have glue guns. We, 
we used to do Elmer's glue and we used to put tacks, whatever we were doing, like it, whether it be a gimp or a double piping, we would Elmer's glue and then put the tack in about every inch and a half or so. Through the double piping, um, you'd have to go through the two pipings. And then we set it for uh, 24 hours or so and then t and twist the tacks out. That's how we used to apply it before. So if you, if you don't have glue, if you don't have a hot glue gun, the Elmer's glue is fine to use. And that's what I was showing people. So wanted to answer that question. Um, Bahama Mama. Oh, and she just, uh, this ties into this. We're posting a piano bench. She says, what is the purpose of the pin tacking? So if you get the online classes, you'll definitely see that in depth and, and how that works in depth. I think a lot of tutorials we, we show, including myself sometimes, we don't show how to stretch fabric. Pin tacking shows really, and breaking, it, breaking down the stretching process, um, that's one good reason to pin tack and, and to demonstrate it to you guys. But the other thing is that you can never ever just start stapling a fabric. It has to be stretched. So I, it depends on the fabric too. If it's a heavy woven fabric, sometimes it doesn't need as much stretching. If it's a stretchy fabric like a wool, sometimes you're, you're pin tacking, pin tacking, pin tacking, pin tacking, going back and forth before you get it just right. So. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a technique that I see is not used a lot, but it's very, it's very useful for beginners, uh, I think. Um, so then we have Janine, and Janine, um, she's commenting on the stay-at-home workshop on call with Jimmy. That, last week we had a, a call in, Jimmy called in, or I called him, and I was looking to see if he was around today, but I don't think he is, which is too bad, because he's got, I, I like Jimmy's sense of humor. We, just, uh, we don't need him. Yeah, we don't need him today. <laughs> I hope he's not watching. We don't need you, Jimmy. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, hopefully he calls. Uh, so Janine says, um, what a great question and answer, guys. That was last week. I wish I could have participated in it. I've been trying to decide on whether to build a pair of your trestle legs, or the horses, we call them horses, and make a padded top, or just manage with my builder's trestles and a table. You help me decide. I'm building the trestles and the padded top as it covers everything from small ottomans to so to a large sofa. There you go. Beautiful. And I, I recommend it against some of those um, store-bought horses because they flare out too much. And I don't know about you, but I, I've used them before and I find myself just tripping over them. You need, you need the, the base uh, not as wide. The base has to come in. Uh, I think we, we, last week we were showing you. But they're, they're down here, about 16 inches. I think. I think the Home Depot one, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to mention the brand name, or any store-bought ones are like this far apart, really far apart. And you can see how you can trip over them. When you're working around a piece of furniture, it's easy to trip over those. So I don't like them. Um, and, they, and they don't have the well that we have on ours, which prevents a piece of furniture from sliding off if you're doing a sofa. So I think that's it for that. Any questions so far, Cameron? No, just people tuning in. So uh, Tony... Uh, Oh boy, I love this. He's got a before and after. She. Sorry, Tony. Every time. I know. Tony, <laughs> you think I know by now? Tony, Tony. with an eye. I know. Um, Tony, she has. Um, she's she's got a, a shade, which I'll show you in a minute. But she says, just finished this side of the road. Fine for my sister-in-law. So I wanted to keep it for myself, <laughs> but it's too big for my room. Do you have that up there, Patrick, or should? Yeah, it's on. Wow, th this is a fantastic job. Before and after. This is a very good piece of furniture, too. I could tell the fabric that was on the old fabric was an old, um, was an old pattern fabric that I recognize somewhat. And that's an old piece, and she did a fantastic job. Really clean looking. You know, to me, what, what, what impresses me about this job is your choice of fabrics. I love the fact that you did a mid-century-like fabric. It looks like a wool. Maybe you can let us know. Um, but it, it goes from a traditional, like it, it screams when it was old, um, you know, Victorian, and then it goes to a mid-century, uh, a beautiful mid-century piece. I love, I love that. It's great. Uh, you're repurposing it really wonderfully, and it looks like it fits into the decor. I'm sure all these things were thought of by you, Tony, but what a nice job. I love it. I love people when they send in their work. It's really good. It's very generous of you to do that. Send your work in. Thank you. And then uh, we have Pam, and Pam has been very busy. <laughs> She's got um, 
Do you have Pam's up yet, Patrick? Yep. I'll just read this. I posted these sweet chairs, Pam says. See the last photo for the before. Even made a pair of slip covered skirts. Slip covered skirts with covered buttons for them for a little changeable color. Wow. I'm talking creativity here. This is fantastic. Because when I first looked at this, I thought we were looking at two different chairs. Because she's got, she upholstered the chair, the four chairs, and then she made slip covers for them just to give a switch back. Really, what a great idea. And I love the buttons on the slip cover. You should pay attention, Pam, to the uh, slip covering um, school classes that we're going to have coming up with Bernice. Uh, but I, I find this very creative, very nice. Very nice. Wow. And then Pam is also busy making masks. And uh, by coincidence, she sent this in to us. By coincidence, we're going to be making the middle one today. Uh, I like the middle one. I, I like the, the fold out one. Uh, we're, admittedly, you know, most upholsterers, most professional upholsterers who trained as upholsterers are stitches. Uh, they're not seamstresses. That's the little between you and me. Uh, I don't sit on the machine all day long like obviously Pam even has more experience probably at the machine than I do. Um, I can stitch, no problem. We're going to do one we'll show you. But uh, she's, she's done a really fine job on this one. I can tell the stitch work is beautiful. And I think she's got the right fabric too. She's got a really lightweight fabric. We're going to show you the attempt I made with some uh, upholstery slash slipcover fabric that's not scotch guarded but still needs the filter so it was three layers. It was a little bit challenging because it was very thick when I, by the time I was done. But anyhow, so we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, are there any questions and answers? Uh, questions, I mean? <laughs> I do the answers. Uh, Sylvia just checked in. Hi Sylvia. So what we're gonna do, I think at this point, we're gonna ask uh, Michaela to help us um, with putting a, uh, cutting a mask out and clipping it together for, for me when I go over the sewing machine. And we're going to try to get into a rhythm with this to see if we can get a couple done. Uh, because we're doing these now for friends. And, and um, So why don't you uh, switch around now, Patrick? We'll go over to the table. Are you cutting first? Yeah, we're going to be right here. Yeah, Is this on now? Is this Not yet. Oh, we're off now? No, no, no. I'm going to move this. There you go, I got the overhead going. two pieces of this cloth fabric that's a very it's a cotton definitely a cotton but if you hold it up you're going to be able to see through it actually this is a pretty good cotton this is a really tight weave that's what you're looking for okay when i this is my fabric when i hold this up michaela look through that look out the window through that you see how, how porous that is look yeah. lower that yeah put that a little lower which is fine there you go which is fine as long as you have the filter i guess but I, if i had the choice i've made a few of them in this and it's heavy fabric anyhow I would like to use this fabric, and I would like to use my filter fabric. So hold that filter fabric up to the window and see, so you, can, you can't see through it pretty much, right? You can't see yeah. holes, right? Yeah. Like a weave. So not only that, but you can breathe through that. So I guess this is what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when we're looking at upholstery fabrics, we're not looking for a scotch guarded fabric. I checked this out. The way to check if it's scotch guarded is just take it to the sink and let the water drip on it to see if it drips off. If it drip, drips off, it's been treated. You might not want to use that for a face mask. Mm -hmm. So you want that cotton. You want it to be clean. You're going to be able to clean these masks too. So you know we want to put them together well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put your barrier down first and put your fabric on top of the barrier. Try to even it up as much as you can. Some people like to use different color fabrics too, just so they don't get mixed up with the with it. So for the next stage, which you'll see. So then on the elastics, they should be about an eighth of an inch. And uh, usually they're uh, seven inches long. And I just want to show people that uh, they're running out of these. It's hard to find these elastics now, I notice. The people, people are really making a lot of these masks. I have a niece that's made a thousand of them down in neighboring town. So I did find, though, I went and I found some headbands. And it just by chance, these headbands, uh, when you fold them in half, they're 14. Once you cut them, they're 14 inches. You cut them again, they're seven inches. 
so they're perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So we can we can use those too. But for today we're going to be using the. I had this at the shop. This is one thing I had at the shop. We cut this in half. It was a little too wide. We tried a mask, and it was too thick for the ears. So the, the, they're saying that the thinner the elastic, the better, right? The, the thinner the elastic, the better, right? And so, so the next step, uh, Michaela, you're going to try to uh, put this on the interior. You want to try to clip, and these clips are great. I don't like the pins. I don't like pinning this. The clips are great. You're going to clip that on there about a half of an inch from the top. Make sure you don't fold this, right? Make sure it doesn't twist on me. And then you're going to clip that at the bottom. So let's see how you do that. And then you're going to do the other side just like that. And I, I see people have all different techniques. Uh, you know, it's, it's incredible how people are really, uh, ordinary people have come to the front and, and done these masks. I think it's great. Interesting comment from Sylvia. She said, so she used to be a nurse. Oh, really? And, um, using vacuum bag as fabric. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. She, that's one of the things that you can use for the filter. Is that what right, that's what she's talking saying. about the filter. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So the reason I know this is a good material, you guys, is because we use it for the pot of the furniture, and it's there for the dust doesn't to come through, to permeate through. So uh, little spot particles of dust can't make it through here. And, and when you hold this up, it's, it's got absolutely no, no pores in it at all, like the fabric does, right? Okay, so the next step, uh, Michaela, is to take another piece and put it on top. And then on this one here, you want to make, this is, this could be a little tricky for people because you have to take the clip one clip off at a time and make sure the elastic gets clipped in between too. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know, move on you. Yeah, we'll see. I'll show you guys with the camera. And some Stay people, in here if you want to show the okay. camera. Some people um, like to take it to the edge of the table because they can get a better grip on the, on the clips if, you have, if you're using big clips, that is. Well, Michaela's getting really good at this. She's got good dexterity, I can tell. She's not having a problem at all. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to ask, uh, actually, I'm Michaela come with me to watch me. Just to talk to her a little bit about how we are. We all set on the, over here, Patrick? Erica checked in. Um, Hi, Erica. She's been using shop towels. Oh, wow. Great. Great. Okay, so the way I start... You Hold guys, on, I, I'm, I have red thread in here just for it to show up in the camera a little bit better for you guys to see what I'm trying to do yeah. here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to come in at about a half of an inch, which is my normal seam, maybe a little bit less. And um, I had my stitching set at two and a half. And I'm going to sew for us here. Now, now, if you guys want to set your machine up to a pink thread or whatever thread you, have, whatever color fabric you have, that's fine. So I'm going to go right to the corner. The needle plants in. I'm going to turn, and then I'm going to take my clip out. And then I'm, we need to make sure you guys double stitch at this area because that's the elastic, and it's going to wrap tight, right? So you, you don't want that to. Um, I come undone, especially if somebody's in the middle of doing something, right? So you're going to take this out, okay, and then I'm going to double stitch over that, and then I'm going to come to the corner, I'm going to plant that, I come around this way, I'm go right to the corner, plant my needle, turn it, take the clip out, Double stitch that and stop right about there because we need to leave this open, right? We take this out. That has to be, we have to reverse this so that the filter is in the center, right? We take this clip out. You guys can find ways of speeding up here. I'm actually going slower just to show you guys. So what I do just to speed up, I don't bother putting the last clip on at the table. I'll just hold my finger on that and then start stitching around that one. So I only have to deal with three clips, does that make sense? Just to speed you up. You guys will find other ways of speeding up. Okay, and then we're going to continue stitching here. I'll take this out. And then we're going to reverse this. Some people have different ways of reversing uh, the fabric. But, um, you know, 
I just kind of stick my finger in there. You don't want to make that that hole too small because you won't be able to get anything in there, right? So sometimes I, I'm brave enough just to pull the elastic a little bit just to try to get the corners out, right? Now I bet I bet Sylvia and, and Pam that she's saying, oh, I got an easier way of doing that. I, that would be great if you guys could post something like that. That would be great. I think people are starting to get really fast with these. So some people at this point like to iron this out. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to iron it after I'm done. But watch. So now you need to, I close up this separately. I close the opening up separately. I'm starting to show my lack of seamstress skills sometimes. Right? I'm going to open this up again. Just to, That. Now, now some people clip or pin this. I'm trying to do it without doing that, right? I'm trying to actually. What I'm trying to do is uh, obviously I'm trying to get this two two hems really, and just seam the two hems, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I have too much of a good time here. Let me see. Painfully slow, you guys, huh? Okay. okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make our little pleats up here. Now, so, so when you make these pleats, you just kind of go, it's going to look like this when it's done, hopefully. And this area is three inches. So just keep this at three inches and you'll be okay. Okay. So it's going to. And, and this part here, usually people clip this, and they try to get their pleats as as as, as uh, straight as they can. What I do is I just kind of eyeball this. You should go all the way around with the stitching. Okay. The next step would be to get a, a little bit of iron and out a little bit. I've been told that the ironing sterilizes the mask. Does that make sense you guys? I guess it would. I, I don't know. I've been told that. Uh, but these should be washable. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's do another one because I think I could do a better job. Um, but this is useful though, you can use this, no problem. So the idea of this is that when you put it around your face, it expands like this, right? And the elastics are good on the ears. So it's not bad. Let's try another one. Uh, Michaela's going to clip me up another one over here. I'll give her the small clips. And I want to show you guys, while she's doing that, I want to show you guys some of the plaid masks that I made. I think I, I had a hard time with this material because it's thick, right, you guys? I guess it's a designer mask. <laughs> but um, the one thing I noticed about any plaid, if you're going to use a plaid or if you're going to use a stripe, make sure you run the stripes this way because then uh, you can use it to line up your pleat so that you don't have to clip it because People are trying to speed up with these masks, so, but I like this the way these came out. It's heavy, it's got the filter in it, but it was a bear to sew, I have to, I have to say. But you get better at these as you go along. So we're going to do one more.
going to do this one a little slower. See if I can get the pleats lined up a little bit better than the other one. It's always good to have somebody else. Um, you can have, you can have, actually, you can get people involved in this that don't know how to sew, or, or um, you know, by cutting the fabric and then clipping. Uh, what 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 um, Michaela is doing now, you can break it down into somebody cutting, somebody putting the mass together and clipping them, and then the person sewing. So you can really get you can get into a production line on this, and really get some mask uh, out there. So thank you, Michaela. So the, and then the other thing too is the, the the job that you do on this, the better job you do on this, obviously, the better it's going to sew up. So Michaela's got all this lined up nicely. So I, I don't have to worry about it. It's going to go again. I got the red thread in there just to kind of give you an idea, just to show you. And then we're just going to come down here. Double stitch. Double stitch. So I don't know what the perfect cotton fabric is yet on this. Um, people are using just about anything they can find, I think. So I'm leaving this open. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave a little bit bigger area open and see if that makes a difference when I reverse it, right? Okay. See what we got there. Let's try and make it easier to reverse it with the bigger opening. I could pull, I could pull my elastics just a little bit, right? And then just try to get my corners out. You know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to try to, I'm going to iron this first just to see if that makes a difference too. If that makes a better mask. I bet it does. If you've got time you guys I I it at this point. And I can tell you already um, I like the way it irons out like that. It's gonna make my job easier. One thing I noticed about some fabrics, they slip. This, this fabric's slipping just a little bit on me. I don't know what that's about. That's sewed up better than the other one. So I think one of the keys is sewing, it's really a bobbin, is uh, sewing, um, is ironing at that point. I can already tell you that's going to that's gonna be it. That's easier to manage. So I, like, I like that. Let me just get another bobbin in here quick. Side. Whoops. So sometimes when you wind a bobbin, um, when you first start a bobbin, it gets tangled a little bit, and that's what happened here, and that's why the thread broke. I'm just going to put that up right there. You guys know that's so that's what I'm talking about, right? So we'll grab another one. Smell that glue to... That's, uh, that's the iron pack. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> actually, there's nothing nice and smell of an iron. For me, actually, you know. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's see if I can... So like I said, some people, they, they fold this down, they clip the whole thing. I find that... Just that extra step a little bit too tiny, so I'm just going to try to do this on my own without the clips, right? Do one more, and then we're going to go back to that wing chair over there. 
you guys. I find that when you when you do this, uh, when you're folding this, you can't help but be at three inches as long as this is cut to six inches, right? That makes sense. I had the nice line, it was perfect. It came out perfect because I had my line in there without clipping it, I mean. Hmm. All right, let's iron that and I think we're done. Then we'll go over to our wing chair. I want to show you guys how, to, how I strip a piece of furniture fast. And I'm, if I have time, I want to measure it up. But we're in a, you plan on doing another YouTube video about this, though? Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, but there's so many good YouTube videos out there with, you know, seamstresses, Patrick. Right. You know, but if, if an upholsterer wants, I guess an upholsterer might find this useful. But like I said, you have to be careful with your materials. You do a little research with some of these people that are on that really know their stuff. But that's, I guess that's okay, right? Okay. So let's go over to the wing chair. All right. So I guess what I want to do is first is, um, is there any questions actually, um, Patrick? Not yet. Comments. Okay, people are wondering or repainting. Or oh yeah, we're doing a little painting in the downtime here. You know, I mean, you can imagine how business is off. I don't know about you guys, but um, we haven't had probably a sale of six weeks, which we, which uh, we just try to get by here. Uh, so, but it gives us an opportunity to do masks and, and do a little painting and kind of reevaluate what we're doing here. And I think what we're doing is great, and that we had such great momentum, like everybody else. The economy was doing so good, and and I think um, there were a lot of people who were finding success in the upholstery business. And then this happens, but everybody's in the same boat, and it could be worse. I'm just glad everybody's healthy. I hope out there, and we're healthy. We're, we're glad to be healthy. Uh, but we'll come back from this, I think, better than we were, because it dawns on me. You know, I, I think actually when we're through this, I think um, this is going to be a great time to be an upholsterer because I think people have spent a lot of time at home. They may have messed some, a lot of things up, you know, the dogs, the cats, the husbands. <laughs> and um, maybe there's a lot of work out there just waiting for us, and I, I think that's true. Um, so, you know, I, I have confidence that we're going to get through this, and then, and then we're going to be better than we were. We're probably going to be so busy. We, in five years will go by and say, what happened, you know? <laughs> Anyhow, so I want to get started on this. I want to just um, do my usual um, measuring up on this, but first I'm going to label everything on the chair. So um, I like to get down the left-hand column everything that I'm going to need, as you've seen the other videos, right? So I think I'm going to uh, just do that now so we have a seat, which the seat is this portion from the seam to here and then side to side. The portion underneath the cushion is the deck. I know you guys who have been doing upholstery know all this already. Uh, but for the new people, we'll go through the whole process again. It's kind of fun. This is different. Oh, I want to talk about this chair. So 25 years ago or so, I taught a class over in um, Brighton, Massachusetts. And I had a woman take, uh, two women that I remembered. Um, Beth and uh, Kate, and Kate was from England, and she took my class, and um, Beth and Kate uh, are still friends after all that time. They met in the class, and they're still friends. That's one story. The other story is that uh, Beth became a customer, and I upholstered these two wing chairs for her 20 years ago. So I'm actually upholstering this chair for the second time, and um, I'm really excited about it because um, I do like my work. <laughs> I guess it's good. Um, 
Uh, so it's kind of cool that I'm doing this twice and that, and that she remembered me and came back and that she met her best friend now, their best friends, and they took an upholstery class. I can't wait to get back to teaching. You know, teaching is such a nice thing to do and if you have stories like that, you know, all the time in the class, um, it's great. Okay, so we have the seat and the deck and we have the inside arms, plural, right? We need two of those. This. You know, it dawns on me that even if you guys uh, have experienced upholsters out there, that every chair is different. This chair, I'll tell you how this chair is different. I'm just going to tilt the, tilt the chair to you. It's unusual for a wing chair. This has a, a pleated and a button in the middle. These, um, I hope I can show you guys this. Um, these, are, these are very different, different style arms. And she wants it the same way, of course. Um, and they're very thin. If you notice how thin these arms are, they're not a traditional English style wing chair, which is huge, right? We have a comment. So we have a comment. Uh, this is from Pam. Hi, Pam. Uh, she says, I love Kevin's methodical process of writing down all the measurements of a piece before beginning. Thank you. I, I find that I never, people say, do you ever, I just had a customer the other day say, um, you know, he wanted me to get more fabric from him, and, and I guess I would have been happy to sell him more fabric, but I said, you don't really need more fabric. I find that I'm about on a sofa, I'm four or five yards under what the other upholsterer is quoting. Um, and I think that the reason that I can, I can be competitive, you need to be competitive that way, because at the bottom line, it's very important for people, right? If you could say, this fabric is for two stickly pieces, Fabric came in at over 200, I think it was $240 a yard, if you can believe that. And um, so that makes a big difference, four or five yards, right, on, on something like that. But this is why I'm able to do it, because we methodically put the, put the measurements down. So thank you, Pam. Yeah, everything's going to get down here, even the cushion, right? So the inside back, then we have the outside arms, the outside wings the outside back, and then I draw a slash line here to, to make the difference between the body of the chair and the cushion, because the cushion has multiple pieces. That's why I like to do that. I like to break it up. Also, for measuring purposes, and you'll, you, you've seen sometimes, and, and it's important to get all the measurements down here because we're all over the board with matching fabric to the best um, possible outcome, conservatively cut outcome. And actually, I want to show you the fabric. I might not get, I'm not going to get to cutting the fabric, but I want to show you that the fabric's another floor. I haven't even opened it up, so I'll open it up live to show you guys the challenge that it is, um, you know, when you have the measurements and then you have to try to put the measurements to the piece of fabric that has a large repeat, like this one did. I was looking at the job I did here. I did, I did some good matching on that, I think. So now, now we have um, the cushion. So I'm going to put cushion down here. Top and bottom cushion, boxing, zipper, need two of those, right? Top and bottom, and then piping, piping. Okay, so I got all my measurements. Now I'm going to actually uh, put this down on the floor for a minute and start where we, right from the top of the seat. So the seat, we're going to measure from the seam underneath here to about an inch underneath here, and then we're going to add three inches. So that's 14. Side to side, I'm going to go right over the top like so. And I got 45. I'm given the three inches. So I, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I did a slash mark up and down and a slash mark side to side, right? So when you, when you go over to your table and you put this down, you're going to be able to reference that easy. Um, and usually, if a fabric is running off the roll, the very important measurement is your side-to-side -side measurement. Okay? So right away, you know, I'll just talk about the seat. Um, I'll probably just take the width of the seat. That'll probably be my first cut, because I'll just take, if it's 54 inches, I'll just take the width. Because as you, in the beginning, it's good to just start off as square as possible. You know, your, your, your puzzle pieces come at the end of your, all your good cuts, okay? Unless you're really tight on fabric, but that's another story. So the inside arms, we're going to measure uh, up and down. Okay, this is tricky. I'll tell you why, because this is one of those channel arms that come all the way down here. So you actually have to start measuring over here, about an inch underneath, and then take your tape and just come this way. Always a tape measure, not a straight edge, right guys? So that's 24. 
So you see this arm, it doesn't look like 24. It looks a lot smaller than that, right? If you, if you measure, a lot of people measure this wrong because they don't take that, that channel into account. Okay, so side to side. Any questions? Uh, you guys have any questions? Well, I must be a good teacher. Nobody asks questions. <laughs> I don't know about that. So 27 plus 3 is 30 inches. Now the deck, um, some people self-deck, meaning in the same fabric. But um, to save fabric, again, we use a, a decking fabric. Right? So we're gonna, on the deck, front to back, it's going to be 21. 21, side to side, is going to be 37 or 38, we'll call it. Uh, the inside wings, let's come over here. Always your furthest point, right guys? About there, so 21 plus 3, that's 24. Up and down, 24 up and down. Notice I always repeat that, that. You'd be surprised between the time you measure and you get to your paper, especially if you're thinking about other things, how you lose the number. So that's why I always repeat up and down, 24 up and down, until I get and write it down. Then I line up my measurements. You'd be surprised. That can ruin your day when you get the measurements, uh, when you twisted up the measurements, right? Especially if you're doing a floral, which I'm about to show you in a minute. So that's 14 plus 3 is, 20, is 17, side to side, side to side. Inside back, up and down. So I'm, I, I don't, when, I'm, when I'm here alone, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking for your benefit. But I'll be saying it to myself, so I'll be saying it to myself like this. Okay, inside back, up and down. Up and down, up and down. I got uh, 38 plus 3 is 41, up and down, up and down, and then I come down here. I'll be saying that to myself. 41, right? And then side to side, side to side. I'm going to tap all right in here because that looks like the furthest point. And I'm going to make sure it goes all the way through if I can. I don't have this strip yet, so it's kind of hard. I have to kind of guess at it. So 20. 27 plus 3 is 30 inches. Let's turn the chair around. Outside arm. Outside, the outsides, you guys, you probably have found if you've done this, and for beginners, I'll just tell you, usually it's an easier measure because it's, it is what it is. If I tell people, measure your up, up and down, side to side, add 3 inches, it's right there. It's the insides that are hard because they, they pull into the chair, they twist around down here, things like that. That's where people make their mistakes. So when you look at the outside arm, it's pretty straightforward. You measure from here to here, go a little bit from the bottom. That's 14 plus 3, that's 17, up and down, up and down, right? And then side to side, I got 17 plus 3 is 20 inches. Outside wings, up and down. Up and down, 20 plus 3 is 23. And then side to side, side to side, we got 12 plus 3 is 15. And now we got our outside back, the last piece, right? Okay, so up and down on the outside back, up and down on the outside back, 37 plus 3 is 40, up and down, 40, and side to side, side to side. We got 23 plus 3 is 26. Okay, let's push this this way. Let's, let's turn it around actually. Let's see. Okay, bring our cushion up. So the only we're gonna have an exact measurement. The only the only point right now we're gonna have an exact measurement on our boxing and our zippers. Uh, but the top and the bottom of the cushion, we're gonna add two inches rather than three inches, right? That one there was still oversizing because we have to customize the cut onto, into the chair. So we got 19 plus 2 is 21 front to back. 21 and side to side. We've got, we've got the actual measurements 31 plus 2, that's 33. So this is the exact measurement. And so what you want to do is measure from the, in, the inside of the seam to the inside of the seam, which is 3 inches. We're going to add one inch to that to make it four inches. That's the width, that's the up and down, four inches. And then I'm going to write exact right next to 
right next to the four so that I know when I'm cutting that I need to slow down on my cutting because everything else you kind of like zip along but when you see the exact or EX that's my code I need to slow down and make sure that it's perfect right and then I'm going to make I'm going to go around to where the zipper starts zipper starts right about here and go all the way around 40 plus 40, that's 80 inches, 80. Okay, now in the zipper, usually the, the, the formula for the zipper is um, you take the boxing and add an inch and a half and divide by two. So if we're, if we're going five and a half, that's two and three quarters, right? So we're going to go 2.75 2. exact, and then side to side. We got 25, we're going to add another one three inches to that to 28. And then I'm going to actually measure my all the way around on my piping for a good reference. I'll tell you why. The piping cut is your longest pipe is your longest piping on the chair. All right? So you got 100 inches of piping, um, 100 inches times two. Okay, the reason I got that down there, so the other piping is a smaller amount, so you can cut those as you go if you want. But the I'm going to try to keep at some point in my puzzle piece, when I get to the puzzle piece of the, of the cutting, um, I want to make sure that I got a piece that's 100 inches long. I made it a little bit longer. It's about 3 or 4 inches longer. I want to stop right here to see if there are any questions or comments. No. Okay, so I just want to hold this up now. So, actually, let me get the fabric. I'm going to show the fabric because I don't even know. It's a mystery to me, this fabric, if I can find it. So here it is. <laughs> Take it all the way out of the package. Well, you guys are finding out about this fabric at the same time I am. I don't think I've seen it. You want to be careful when you're cutting your package, especially with a lightweight fabric. Repeat of this. Woo. Okay, Mikhail, what type of flowers are those? They look like roses. Do you think? Maybe. Oh no, they couldn't be roses. They have more of a front. Somebody out there will know. <laughs> Tulips? Tulips, maybe? Yeah. So a lot of times on prints they, they tell you on that on one side, on the left side, the up. Obvious, this is pretty obvious that I have it going. It's coming off the fabric the right way. So the reason I wanted to show you that is because obviously um, you need to you need to find out if it's an overall fabric first. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna unroll it all the way up. Now look at this. Yeah, I think I got some good news for myself. And the good news is I'm gonna consider this. Hmm, I'm still debating. Um, no. I'm going to pick this as a, as a center and center it all out. I, I was starting to go with the thought that this is an overall fabric, but I don't think it is because it's different colors and different flowers, right? So I probably would take this color, the, um, this color, the darker color flower, and then just center that all the way up. Now, on this fabric here, I don't have to flow it. I don't have to match it. I don't think it would look good as a flow. In fact. So I'll take something. Let me just turn the cushion and show you. Because the boxing is so small, so my, my, my first thought is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to center the cushion with that flower and then center it up here. And maybe have it flow all the way down, but not flow off the cushion. Um, sometimes I don't do that. I don't match it. But we'll see. I'm not sure positive about that. But it, it's, it's a process. But I did want to show you before we, before we go. Um, so I have to contend with um, centering that, that flower. And the reason I picked that flower is because it's in the middle of the fabric. So my first cut on the seat will be okay. I'm going to put a check mark there, which be, I'm just going to take the, a nondescript part of the fabric. I'm not going to take this flower. I'll take a nondescript part and use it for my seat. Does that make sense to you guys? The deck I know is going to be a different fabric, so I have that. 
So my inside arms are 30 and my outside arms are 20. So I'm going to probably put those two together. See what I'm doing, you guys? I want to save fabric. And then the outside, I, I have two chairs here, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So I have two outside back, outside backs. So I'm probably going to work out pretty good with the 26. So I'll put a check mark there. So I'm going to be well into the fabric with my, I'm going to be well into my measurements. So at, at this point, it becomes a little bit like that puzzle piece that you guys are used to you doing. But when you're doing that, don't, don't, don't cross cut at that point because you're, you're going to need to save a long piece of fabric for that 100 inches down here. So always keep that in mind. So you don't want to do the cross cut. You want to leave that jagged piece of fabric hanging off the bolt onto the floor. Make sure the floor is clean. Make sure you have that long, long strip. So I hope that was useful. I think we covered a lot of ground. And um, unless there's more questions, um, we're going to sign off. And we hope to see you guys next week. And thank you for tuning in. Okay? Thanks a lot. All right, Patrick? Yeah, sounds good.